so when it comes to tool watches, for me, number one is G-Shock. They are the king. They offer such a robust watch. Can handle pretty much anything you throw at it. If you're looking at automatics, though, to me, Damasco is where it's at. I've owned three Damascos. I've never had a problem with any of them. With their ice-hardened steel cases for superior scratch resistance, as well as all the tech they pack into their watches, I think they're about as tough as it gets when it comes to an automatic. And the DA37 we're going to be looking at today is a great example of one. This watch was lent in, along with another watch actually, from a good friend of mine, Jay. So big thanks to Jay for doing that. Really appreciate it. So let's get to the watch. Now, first of all, the build quality on Damasco watches is top-notch, really good fit and finish. But on top of that, Damasco designed their watches for ultimate legibility. There is zero problems getting the time with a quick look. They do dabble in different colors on some of their models, but the bulk of them are either black dials with a high contrast, stark white handset and markers, or in this case, the opposite with the white dial. Now this is a fully loomed dial and I'll put up a loom shot here now and you can see that legibility remains in low light too. This watch uses C1 Super Luminova. There's brighter loom options they could have used, but C1 is white in full light versus the yellowish or greenish tinge you get with some other loom formulas. I think it's worth the trade-off to keep the dial white like it is, and the loom is still quite strong and long-lasting. The dial is a very clean layout with the crosshairs Damasco uses on most of their dials. We've got the large hour markers and the triangle at the 12. One very subtle detail is the day-date placement. It's not right at the 3. It's slightly offset just below the crosshair. And to get that slight offset day-date, the print work on the day and date wheels needs to be offset too. So that with the logo just above the crosshair give it a little more symmetry and makes for a cleaner look, I find. On either side of the six is printed made in Germany. The handset is painted black and all are the perfect length with the hour hand touching the very edge of the numerals and the minute and seconds hands reaching right inside the minute track. As a whole, this is as good as it gets for a dial layout. I could see people thinking maybe it's a little bland with it being so no nonsense, but I love that clean look. The case is completely bead blasted and made with ice hardened steel. It's hardened to 710 Vickers versus the usual 316L stainless that's 152 Vickers. So it's over four times harder than most watches out there. I can attest to the scratch resistance. Of the three I've personally owned, I've never found a visible scratch on any of them. Even this watch, which Jay is the second owner of, is completely mint. And you can tell the strap has some wear, so it's a well-worn watch. As far as the case design goes, it's a simple but well-done design. Slightly curved lugs, which are drilled for easy strap changes. We have the crown guards protecting the crown, which is a signed screw down crown. The crown is very smooth to operate. You get that nice pop when you unscrew it. Not sure if you heard that or not, but the winding action is good. No problem setting your date or time and it finds the threads very easily when you screw it back in screws back in smoothly one piece of tech that damasco uses on the watch is there's a lubrication cell to keep the crown permanently lubricated so you're always going to have that silky feel Speaking of tech, there's quite a bit of other tech they use in their watches. Some watches get more than others, but a couple of things with this particular model worth mentioning. One is the gaskets they use. They're Viton gaskets that are not only offering us water resistance, but also chemical resistance. The watch uses an inner cage giving it anti-magnetic properties. 
This model is water resistant to 100 meters, but it's also resistant to negative pressure as well. Now, if you go to their site, there's a tab called Technologies. It's pretty cool to go through what they've put into their watches. Depending on the model, some have different tech implemented, but they definitely go the extra mile with the innovations they come up with. Size-wise, this model comes in right at 40 millimeters in case width. Lug to lug is 48 millimeters. The lug opening is 20 millimeters, so no problems finding straps for this one. And the thickness is 12.2 millimeters. The crystal is sapphire with an anti-reflective treatment on the top and underside. You can, with a special request, have the AR only on the underside, and I'd suggest doing that. It can scratch fairly easily, although you can remove that coating if you want, but I'd probably just not have it to begin with. Running the watch is the ETA 2836-2, self-winding 25 joule movement, beating at 28,800 vibrations per hour. On wrist, these wear like a dream. Comfort level is very high and you really don't need to worry about this one no matter what you're getting up to. It can handle just about anything. One thing I wasn't sure on was the strap. I asked the owner, and we both assume this is an older Damasco strap, but I couldn't 100% confirm that. It does have the ice hardened buckle, but if this is a Damasco strap, they need to bring these back. It is a really nice material. It feels similar to isoframe straps, but it's very thin compared to those. I really like it. Cost on this watch is 1150 US dollars and it is 100% worth it. They make an amazing watch and I hope to add another to my collection sometime soon. So that's it guys. I can't recommend Damasco enough. If you have a contender for the toughest automatic watch, I'd love to hear in the comments below. Zinn is definitely a good pick, although you got to go a little more expensive before you start getting the hardened steel in uh, their models. But I'd love to hear what you guys have for very tough watches, very tough automatic watches in the comments below. Maybe I can feature them on the channel. So thanks again to Jay for lending this in. Keep an eye out for another video featuring a watch of his and also my newest addition to the collection very soon. Both watches that fit into this tool watch category as well. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Thanks so much for stopping by and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.